on. We're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. We're back on. Amazing. Hardly half time break, was it? Welcome back to Sport Relief. This time on BBC Two. Amazing. We've had such a good night. Have we not had such a good night so far? We're going to be back with you after Top Gear. This is so amazing. Hammond, back to the day job. Yes. Well, uh, tonight <laughs> we've seen lots of people pushing themselves to the limit. But me and the Top Gear team decided to push someone else to the limit. It's just easier. By resurrecting Grand Force and attempting a makeover on their garden. Um, it was <laughs> a very, very genuine surprise, as it turns out. So for one night only, this is Top Gear Grand Gear Force. Hello, and I've just trodden in some dog poo. Um, never mind. Uh, I'm sure you all remember uh, the TV show Ground Force. Um, the idea was that uh, some people with regional accents would come round to your house while you were out and do up your garden. Uh, then you'd come home, cry with unbridled joy, and uh, then everyone would have some warm pomain. Um, now, sadly, it isn't on anymore, so we thought it would be a good idea to bring it back. I mean, Gardening. How hard can it be? Well, I should imagine very hard. Well, we're going to find out. This is the team. Uh, there's Handy Hammond, James E. Dimmock, May, uh, and then we've got some Poles who actually do all the work. Now, anyway, let's get cracking. <laughs> The lucky recipient of our top ground gear force garden makeover is a sporting legend. Five times Olympic gold medalist Sir Steve Redgrave. A man whose shoulders are thicker than my torso. Great Britain on the line! Here we go! Great Britain! Get the gold medal! And relief all round! And triumph for Steve Redgrave. Five in a row. What a hero! This is his garden, and this is his wife, Lady Anne. Now, he really doesn't know, does he, that no. we're doing this? I mean, hand on heart. Absolutely. No idea at all. Because everyone on television believes it, you know, nobody believes know. a word on television. He really genuinely does not know. He has no idea. This is just fantastic. Now, the garden, have you got any ideas, anything you want? Well, Steve likes water features. He tried one over there around the corner. <laughs> so you could try one of those. It does trickle over the top of the pot. No, I might be able to... In the bottom. I could improve on a trickle. Uh -huh. I do, I like fountains. No, we can do Other that. Other than that, I, I don't mind, as so long as it looks reasonable. No, no, it'll look reasonable. I just think with a few features, I think, yeah, would be good. Well, we have our treehouse. <laughs> no, that's good. We can sort of, yeah, piles to it and stuff like that. No, no, it'd be good. Now, he's home, so Steve is home in... Well, he'd be about five o'clock tonight. Five o'clock, so it's half past eight now. What's the maths on that? Nine, six, seven, eight and a half hours. We need to get cracking. Right, now, since I'm the only country bumpkin on the team, I'm in charge. And since I'm also the only one who went to art college, I've drawn the plans. So, here's what we're going to do. There's a house, there's a garage, so that's over there. Now, Sir so Steve Redgrave is a very busy man, so when he comes home, he likes to relax. So I've got a sort of family chill-out barbecue area here mm -hmm. with some decking overlooking a bed full of flowers. And then there's here a river of gravel cascading down through the garden to this, which is one of those seats that goes round a tree. Where's the water feature? Well, there isn't one. Why not? What? All that matters in a garden is a water feature. No, sorry, all that matters in a garden is a shed. No, look, there isn't a shed or a water feature, all right? No, a garden should speak of the man. It does. There's nothing here that says Olympic rower. There's a river of gravel. That's just That's annoying. It goes, it's... no, it's just, look, you've got to walk miles no, to get right. to the That's sea. That's the theme of the garden, it's... a river of gravel. It's rubbish. He's going to come out of his house and it's going to take yeah, him all week to wend his way. He's just going to walk all over there, you know. And this, this bed, yeah. you're doing the hoeing. I am not doing any hoeing. I don't even know what hoeing is. Yeah, well, hoeing anyway, is you don't need a hoe. There's only one tool you need for gardening. And I've got it. It's a hammer. It'll be a hammer. It's not a hammer! This... Is that a hoe? ..is all you... <laughs> 
No, it isn't. No, if you want to remove a plant, say, OK, there are no thistles at this time of year, but imagine they're thistles. How do you get them up? Well, well you take one of these, which is a trowel, yeah. and then you uh, approach it like that, and you dig around it, lift it, and there it is. That took you... Well, about 30 seconds. Dirty fingernails, cricked back. It's gardening, that's what let, you do. OK, now let me show you how I would remove it, OK? See these three here, ready? Well, granted, they're gone, but you they're can't... They're gone. You can't garden with a they shotgun. They have ceased to exist. Observe the genius of my gardening. I'd rather he had a hammer. You do realise we've already wasted an hour. Hammond sent James and I off to get supplies at something called a garden centre. It was a place which seemed to be mostly full of sheds. And what kind of nerd would find those interesting? Wow! I, however, wasn't experiencing such joy. Why does everything have to be in Latin? Every single... Hermales Intermedia Palidia. Presumably that's Latin for dead twig in some mud. Everything's dead. Look, it's all just dead. It's all dead, look. Just a forest of deadness. What's this? Just... That's a rose. Will it grow by 5 o'clock this afternoon? No, I'm afraid not, no. In the shed zone, James was struggling to find something which matched his rigorous standards. Now, this is dangerously close to being a gazebo, which means it will be misappropriated, look, by people on exercise bicycles. Do you have any gorgonzola here? Gorgonzola? Gorgonzola. I'll go and check for you. Thanks. I don't mean gorgonzola, do I? That's a cheese. That's bougainvillea, I meant. So what's alive that I could have? You want there's, no point, there's no point paying for daffodils. You're just going to nick those from a roundabout. No, I'm looking Hanging for something buses. for a garden, a rower's garden. Right. I've been okay. sent to get plants, but I just don't know. Other than gorgons, no, uh, what's it called? Gonorrhea. Three ferns. Um... Have you got any syphilis? This is heading in the right direction, the uh, six by four apex shed of shiplap construction. It's a very simple structure. It has a window, but it's not really the shed for a man of the stature of five times Olympic gold medal winning Sir Steve Redgrave, CBE. We want something bigger. Finally, I found something I recognised. Greenhouses. <clears throat> I know what they're for. You can use them for growing apples and meat, eggs, stuff like that, stuff that need to be warm. Go in there. Well, get one of those. Look at this. It's a... Uh, Chlamydia lawsonenia, or as Richard Hammond calls it, a mighty Scotch pine. Is there so far, we'd been on the job for two hours, and Sir Redgrave's garden had gone from looking like this to looking like this. But no matter, we were men on the move. <laughs> She shook me. I just think she fell off it or something. Put it back. Good, 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 good. Right. right. In the garden, the Poles set about building the greenhouse. And with his usual sense of urgency, James started on the shed. Ooh. Oh, yes. Hammond, meanwhile, was preparing to dig the foundations for his rivers of gravel. Hammond! What? You've got to wear that. What? You've got to wear that. Why? Because health and safety say it'll keep you healthy and safe. Safe from what? Right. With Hammond protected from certain death, I got cracking with my water feature. Right, I want a trench four yards long one yard wide, what metre, and one metre deep. A trench. Trench. 
Be like Charles Bronson, he was Polish in The Great Escape. Go on, dig. 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 Quantity one, heavy duty workshop door end. Heavy duty workshop plane end. Two heavy duty workshop window panels, yes. Two heavy duty workshop plane This was ridiculous. James had to be reminded that we were against the clock. Yes, yes I know, but it's, you've spent like half an yeah, hour. If the screws are not in the right lengths and the wrong holes, you get Just... end up at the end of the shed with the wrong screw left over and it won't be long enough. And build, then you have to dismantle the Build the, the shed! I'm building the shed. You're not this is building the shed, building you're shed. naming your you... tools. <laughs> Is this your tape measure? Might be. Right, before we go any further, it's time for a quick reminder of why Alan has just shot a tape measure. It was a conscious decision to kill myself. Every year, around 6,000 people in the UK are so unhappy that they take their own lives. That's over 100 people a week. It just got all too much. Sport Relief Money is working hard to be there for people when they need it most. Don't give up. Sport Relief is raising vital money to help people in trouble all over the UK. My son Andrew is 14. He disappeared one Friday morning and we've heard absolutely nothing of him since. Don't give up. Missing people have been hugely important as emotional support, looking and searching for our son and hopefully to end up bringing him home. And it's not just young people that Sport Relief is helping. We were married 59 years in one month when she died. Fred buys carnations for Joyce every week, the same colour as the ones that were in her wedding bouquet in 1946. I can feel her here all the time, but I do miss her. Thanks to you, there is somewhere he can go to be with people who understand how he feels. It is getting easier to be able to talk about it. It brings out all the emotion and all the feelings that you got there, and it helps. <laughs> Jamie's 12, and uh, he was diagnosed with autism in May of 1999. He does live in quite an isolated world. Don't give up. For their few minutes, I know, they I know. are David Bentham yeah. and they are Stephen Gerrard. Come on! Sport Relief is building teams and changing lives. Gregor is part of a winning team, his family. Two years ago, your money paid for them to have a day to remember. Gregor's got a form of muscular dystrophy known as Duchenne's, a genetic condition which is only found in boys. He has asked, where am I going to die? Is it going to be soon? I keep saying to him, well, nobody knows. We just, you know, when it happens, it'll happen. You'll know yourself when the time is right. <laughs> Every time I watch it, I, I, I do, I get a lump in my throat. Don't give up. Tonight is all about reaching out your hand to someone in England, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland or in Wales who just can't make it on their own. This is your chance to help make a difference to someone's life. To help them get back on their feet. To help them be a winner. To help them face the battles ahead. Your money is helping families face the future. Sport relief. Rise to the challenge. You'll be helping change someone else's life forever. Call us now on 08457 910 910 and make a donation. Thank you. In the time it's taken Jamesy Dimmock to organise his tools and Handy Hammond to dig a six-inch hole, the poles have already got the glass in the greenhouse. And this is my water feature. It's arrived. And it is. Well, it's an exquisite piece, it really is. Um, the only trouble is it comes with the Nissan Micra of pumps. This will only um, shift, what, 
a gallon of water a minute. So what I've done is brought along this. This is the Ferrari Enzo of pumps. Comes from the world of quarrying, and this will shift 15,000 gallons a minute. Now, unfortunately, you do need a, a generator to run it, but that's arriving now on the back of the articulated lorry over there. Now, the great thing about this pump is that it gives me flexibility. You can either have, I don't know, a little tinkling, gentle dribble of water, or you can crank it up a bit and have the... Yeah, I've made that worse. That, that's, that's not gone well, has it? No, it's fine. It's, it's, um, this is so I can get in to cut... How the hell did that happen with my high vial? Well, what you've just done is prove that all the health and safety executives' advice is pointless meddling twaddle. This is... If I'm honest, it didn't help. At no that's, point did the vest say... That's yeah. kind of... Yeah. Um, well, come on, just push it yeah. up. You won't be able to push it up. You will. You won't. You it will. Weighs... What, whoever made a lightweight digger? If they were light... James, they... get down and push. If they were light, they'd and fall over. That was heavier than I thought. It turns out yes, to be quite exactly. heavy. It's it much heavier than I thought. We're going to need a bigger digger. Hammond went and got a bigger digger, which proceeded to turn this little piece of Marlowe into the song. I mean, it will grow back. As, as a gardener, I, I can tell you that. It's grass, it grows back. Look at that. Hammond, you're ruining the lawn. The lawn is being ruined. Where does it say on your plans, big digger marks? I've got to turn the digger around to pull the other digger up. Over the next half hour, all he managed to do was lacerate the lawn even more. He doesn't strike me as a lawn type of bloke, says Steve Redgrave. Well, you think he prefers tractor marks and mud? I don't think it'll be that fast. But then the digger fiasco was interrupted by the arrival of my concrete. <laughs> The smell of civilization arriving. All right, chaps, if you my genius plan was to concrete over the lawn. Where are my plans? Does it say concrete? Concrete's better than grass. Sir Steve Redgrave is a busy man. He hasn't got time to mow his lawn every 20 minutes. With this, you just have to hoover it in the autumn. But it looks shit. It doesn't. Grass looks shit because it fills up with watercress. And, and, and lawns give me hay fever. But you don't live here. Well, maybe they give Sir Steve Redgrave hay fever. Oh, for God's sake. Does Sir Steve Redgrave get hay fever? No. Do you get hay fever? No. Does any member of Sir Steve Redgrave's family get hay fever? No. Wait, wait, wait. While those two were bickering over the lawn, my shed was taking shape nicely. The thing you've got to remember is that everything good in the world, especially everything good that ever came out of Britain, came out of a shed. Radio, television, jet engine, printing press, and in other countries, the aeroplane, the hot air balloon. <laughs> See, the thing about this shelf... ..is that on it, one day, will rest a component that Sir Stephen Redgrave, CBE, five times Olympic gold medalist, will pick up and use to create something brilliant. And that can only happen because people have sheds with stuff in them. You see what I mean? My hay fever removal system had hit a snag. I ordered 20 tonnes of concrete, which I thought would be enough to do the whole lawn. In fact, it's only going to be able to do an area this big, which means that this is all still going to be grass. And look what Hammond's done. There isn't enough concrete to cover this bit of lawn. Do you think Sir Steve Redgrave is going to be particularly upset that we haven't been able to concrete the bit of lawn that we've driven over with a massive digger? Which is worse! We decided to worry about the digger issue later, because on the other side of the garden, the ever-efficient poles had finished my tree seat. It goes round a tree, and then you can sit any side and just admire the view. And this is exactly how you designed it, is it? Yep, it is. So how are you going to get it round the tree? Uh, yeah. Well, you could plant a tree in the middle, 
and then it would grow in place. Yes. Yes, you could, if Sir Steve Redgrave wasn't coming home for 200 years. You, you could lower it from the top. Yeah, but so what that... about... Look at all the branches. No, I, I can deal with those. He's tall, but that is ambitious. You can't prune a tree with a shock. Yes, you can. This is going well. It's not working. That's... It is working. Not... Oh, yes, we're going to have a massive bonfire with your prunings. As I blew the tree to pieces with my under and over hoe, the crane arrived that would lower the seat into place. By the tree. Sorry. Shit. Oh, yeah. One bench solution system. Happily, Hammond's crane didn't have tracks. Unhappily, it weighed... 14 tonnes. I've, I've got my crane stuck, is what I've done. What you've done now is ruined a bit more of the lawn. It's no biggie, no biggie. Although the crane had sunk into Sir Steve Redgrave's lawn, Luckily, the arm was long enough to reach my tree seat. Steady. A foot. A foot. No, up. No, you've got to lift it. No. Hammond, I mean, you idiot, man. Honestly! <laughs> How can you be so useless, man? Hammond is really... Yeah, listen, no, honestly, it. that's the only bit of this project that has gone properly. The shed was up and perfect, and you've wrecked the shed, and you've wrecked your stupid, idiotically designed... No, this is a loss. Bed. That part no, no, it's not a loss. It's, it's a not a loss. That is, is not, it isn't, because it, isn't. it turns out that this... It doesn't matter. ..this is no good for shooting branches off. No, but the river of gravel cascading majestically and through the garden to end in the tree Have you any right idea spoil? What? how far we are from a river of gravel running through <laughs> your garden? Look what it's got. It's got a river of track marks, a, a broken, stupid there's toy a, digger in a, a hole. There's a few sites along the way on the river. I've the crane stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the hole. <laughs> Look at that! That, that, that's, that, is, that is It stuck. has gone... How long have we been here? Four hours? Five hours? It's gone backwards. Guys, we do need to speed up. So, in just five hours, we dug a trench, uh, crashed a digger, knocked over a shed, concreted half the lawn, ruined the other half with caterpillar tracks, broken a seat, shot some flowers and wounded one of the poles. But the greenhouse was looking good. And a short while later, James had his shed back up as well. And now for another timely reminder of why we're here. Justin is six years old and, just like so many other little boys, loves spending time with his all-time number one hero, his dad, Kanan. Kanan works full-time to make ends meet, so Justin comes too. He does what he can to help his dad collect reeds for his business. Kanan uses the reeds to make flower arrangements that he sells in town. In a good week, he'll earn about five pounds. Just enough for the two of them to scrape by. Kanan knows there's only one sort of arrangement that sells here. Funeral wreaths. In the north of Zambia, there are hundreds of funerals. Every day, every week. 
AIDS has ravaged this time. Almost everybody's lost someone to the disease. Kanan and Justin are no exception. Justin was only two when his mum died of AIDS. I get really worried about Justin because he doesn't have a mum. So I try to make sure I'm with him most of the time. Life has been tough for both of them since Justin's mum died. I miss my wife very much. When she was still alive, life was easier. Sometimes, when my work couldn't support us, she would help me in gathering flowers to sell. Doing the work he does, Kanan is constantly reminded of his loss and the uncertain future that both he and Justin face because they too are ill with HIV AIDS. When dad gets sick, he goes and stays in the hospital and I am left on my own. I don't have any way of getting the things I need, but sometimes the church gives me grapes to eat and juice to drink. Justin's life is surrounded by death. There's no respite from it. And sometimes it's just too much for his dad to bear. I love Justin very much because he's my only child and the only child that God has given me. What Kanan needs right now is some help looking after Justin. And that's where you step in. Your money is helping to pay for Justin to join this nursery. The staff here are specially trained to take care of kids who are sick with HIV AIDS and who have lost their mums and dads. It costs just £37 a month to pay for a nursery teacher here. Please pick up the phone tonight and donate whatever you can. You'll be helping kids like Justin get the support they need. 08457 910 910. Thank you. So you see, you take the big spanner off, you can see the big spanner is missing, put the big spanner on, you know it's in the right place. If Jeremy Clarkson came in here and did that, you'd see immediately that that is not the correct spanner for that peg. That should be on there, and that should be on there. With James suffering from an industrial bout of OCD, I set about removing Sir Redgrave's flower bed. Now, the traditional method for removing an unwanted rockery is a shovel. Uh, so... Excuse me. Guys, guys, can we just hold the music? Just for a second, can we hold the music? Thanks. Uh, as I was saying, uh, shovel, crowbars, lots of elbow grease. There is, however, another way. What you need is some sugar, some fertiliser, a length of wire, some electricity and a plunger like we have here. Uh, OK. Fire the pool! That usually clears them. James didn't take the news well. Look what you've done to my bloody shed, man! I had this bomb, and it, uh, it that'll buff out. What time is this program on? Is it ten o'clock? Yeah. Is it ten o'clock on BBC Two? Yes. Are we beyond the watershed? Yes. You're a fuck. Guys, <sighs> what have you done? 
I, I thought it was more set, and it, I went through it, and I'm, I'm stuck in your concrete. Well, oh, for God's sake. What? What? You've left footmarks. Well, it was hardly perfect to start with, was it? You've already ruined the lawn with your concrete, and now I've walked on it. I'm sorry. Duh. It was supposed to look like lawn. How can it look like lawn with... It's not green! How can it look Please like lawn? Please, stop the music. Can we stop? Please. Stop it! Soon we had Hammond free, and as James rebuilt his shed again, I began work on me rugby posts. And then bring it along, because you've got to push, yeah. What are you doing now? It's the rugby posts. Have you brought anything that's on my plan? No. And how do you even know that Sir Steve Redgrave likes rugby? Uh, well, I do. Does Sir Steve Redgrave play rugby? No. Do you play rugby? No. Does any member of Sir Steve Redgrave's family play rugby? No. Heave! Come on! Yes! Yes! Jeremy. What? No member of the Sir Steve Redgrave family plays rugby. Well, will be able to, then. Well... Whoa! Actually, they won't. Again, James was very angry with me. I think you've got something to say to me, haven't you? I'm surprised how heavy rugby posts are. Something along the lines of, I'm sorry, James, I am a fully rigged, rate A1, two. You two. ocean going. Sir Steve pillar. Redgrave will be here in half an hour. We've got to speed up again. James's shed was mended again. The digger was camouflaged, and best of all, my water feature was finished. You see the adjustability of it? You can have it high or low. We go low, down. Now that's off. Up, there, or up. With Sir Steve Redgrave just minutes away, Hammond unveiled his barbecue. I've put some thought into this because for this, I've not used coals, which take ages to light and give you salmonella. I've used jet engines. So we fire them up. Jet engines? Jet engines, two of them. So I turn them on here. Barely but these were tiddlers compared to the engine that would cook the meat on the rotisserie. It's actually a V1, uh, so I'm just going to... from a doodle bug? Yes, it's a doodle bug engine. Here we go. It is a bit more temperamental than coal, but when it works, boy, does and it work. You, and you turn that, then? It will start turning. You have to get it up to speed. It turns the fan around. Which, there you go. Oh, well, that's quite it's good, genius. actually. It's Yeah, that's cut. It needs some adjustment. Hang on, let me just... Um... <laughs> there, there you go. Oh, no. I didn't have it set right. That's actually better. That's... See, now that's going to grill it properly. You'll get some proper blackening of the chicken. That's... That's hot, absolutely. Oh! Uh, oh. Uh, hang on. No, so, no, no, no wait, you wait, utter wait, wait. pillock. No, let no, me do I'm it. I'm to do it. I'm, I'm sorry, I... Oh, ah, sorry, you see, sorry. Oh, you've frozen my ghoulies! I'm sorry, Give it to me, give it to me! It went the wrong way! Let me do it! Let me do it! You're in. Red Grave is coming up the drive! What? Red Grave is coming up the drive! Right! Just Red Grave, coming up the drive. I was just about ready. Where's we hiding? Oh, no, no, behind a tree! It was hiding ground force. Why don't we tell him his wife did this and then we've been called in? Yeah, to put it right. To put it right. And we're just about to start. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, okay. God. 
How do you think he'll react? No, I don't know. Seriously. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. You go, James. Go on up. James, go on up. What does he look like? Where's the drink? Have you got the drink ready? I've got the drink. Yes. Don't hide behind me. I can hide behind anybody. Right, look happy, just look happy. Just look happy. Please, look, please, 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 If we carry this through, mate, just happy. I've never been so nervous in my life. No, I'm scared. I'm terrified, man. I have no problem. It's a big bloke. It's very, very it's not the size, it's just the range. Yeah. Hi. Hi. This is Steve Redgrave. Redgrave. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah, I know you are. With, with... It's, um... It's what? Sport it's... relief. I know you think we're from... It's confused. You're confused, I would imagine, because we're from Top Gear, and we, we... thought we'd come and do... Top um, Gear ground... Ground force. force and make your garden, improve... But we haven't quite finished. But if we talk... I mean, the plans, the ideas behind it are, are brilliant. Now, we can talk you through some of the better things. Some of the really... But that's one of Does, the worst things that you're seeing there. But it has better points. Like it was, this was a surprise, just not a good one at the end of it. The Poles could sense the mood. We, however, would not run. We would stand together and face the problem of Steve's wrath united as one. Actually, it's Hammond's fault. Hammond put the digger on its side. Hammond chewed the lawn up. I Hammond set it's... fire to your shed. I think it's yours and Hammond's fault. Frank. I think he's going to... a perfectly good shed. If he'd Did... come out and I'd if he built a shed, he'd have been pleased. How could he not be? Do you think he's going shed. to come out of the house again? And kill us, yes. Sir Steve really was incandescent. So Jeremy volunteered to be Henry Kissinger. And despite this, Sir Steve's mood did Brighton. It doesn't look good. But imagine, OK, summer's evening, sitting out here, the sun streaming over the, the fallen over digger. Sorry about that. Yes, he, there was an accident yeah. there. But look at the greenhouse, though, Sir Steve. Just... Greenhouse looks good. The greenhouse is lovely. The poles built that, and it works. They're very but this, I think you'll find, is the pièce de résistance. This, you see the water feature? Now, what I've done is I've kind of turbocharged the pump a bit. All right, OK. Do no, you because... stand back a little bit, then? No, 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 no. It's, it's, you know, like, you get a dribble, normally, of water? It'll now... It'll be... It'll be you know, it's, it's turbocharged. You'll think of rowing. I think it now speaks of the man. I've been trying for the last eight years to not think about <laughs> rowing. <laughs> Ready? So, Steve. There we go. Oh, God. I'm sorry about what it's done to the greenhouse. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> so there you are, Sir Steve Redgrave, Lady Anne, children. This is your new garden. <laughs> Sport Relief 2008 on BBC Two. Yes. Yeah, and you've just seen Top Ground Gear Force. Yes. And I have to say, oh, sorry. Honestly, I can't believe Richard, it. that was so awful. That was like butt clenchingly embarrassing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Wasn't it? I'm, I'm sorry. What did you do? Well, the thing is, Sir Steve Redgrave really didn't know. I mean, it was a real, genuine surprise. We like to do things properly Can I just on say Top Gear. Look we, at me we like did. that again. Look, he looks like Puss in Boots from Shrek. Sorry. You know when he does that? <laughs> With his hat. Or, do it to the camera. Can you do it to the camera? Look. Or Clint Amazing. Eastwood. One or the other. Yes, or yeah. Clint Eastwood. He yes. didn't know. We had no idea. So we got out of the car and the shed was on fire. And he hates surprises. Well, two things about Sir Steve Redgrave to know. One, he hates surprises more than anything else <laughs> in the world. Two, he loves his lawn. And one other <gasps> thing. He's and very, very big. He's a big lad. Yeah. And we surprised him 
by ruining his norm. Let's have a quick look at his face when you surprised him. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't a police. <laughs> no, that's not a, not a police. What we did was hide behind Jeremy. <laughs> Yeah. And Who what did away? Jeremy do? He yeah, ran exactly. away. Yeah, it, it wasn't um, it wasn't a brilliant idea, as it turned out. So did you deliberately mm. trash his garden? No, you it... see, the thing was, oh, we on. had a plan, and it started off... It went badly wrong mm. from beginning The cement was really mean. Yeah. Yeah. The, the digger on its side, the crane, and none of it went well. It turns out gardening's really difficult. You wouldn't have thought of it. I've they got... make it look so easy, those guys. Yeah, well, we've proved that it isn't. It's but really difficult. Is he talking to you now? Because you did share a stage earlier on. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I saw them speaking back there. I was ran he shouting? Away. Can I just say, so Steve <laughs> is an amazingly good sport, and I've got to say a massive thank you to him for even speaking to us after he'd seen all of that. I'd also like to thank Steve's wife, Lady Anne, and his loyal PA Mel, who helped organise everything, because it couldn't have happened without you. And thanks again to Steve yeah. for allowing him still to do his work. And Steve, after that. Thank you, Steve. Sorry. Thank you very much. Sorry. Forgive him. Sorry. He looks like Christian Beats. Soon, we'll be handing you over to Paddy and Kilda on BBC One, and they've got a fantastic line-up of entertainment for you. Jonathan Ross has been especially busy. Uh, yep, yeah, not only will you be able to see the historic first TV meeting of Ross versus <gasps> Parky. Uh, but you'll also discover what happened when Jonathan threw down the gauntlet to his tennis buddy Jimmy Carr. It wasn't exactly Wimbledon finals. Here's a taster. Since the dawn of mankind, titans have clashed in the world of sport. Watch and learn, Wazetsky. What worries me the most? I mean, what doesn't worry me is the question. <laughs> I'm a bit concerned about a couple of things. Uh-oh, found the weakness. I should be dissing my backhand. Now, two giants will meet in an epic doubles battle that will eclipse all that have gone before. <laughs> Jonathan, the Rocket Ross. The serve is very accurate. The forehand, formidable. Whoa! See? <laughs> it's just the way I roll. We'll take on Jimmy Boom Boom Car. As long as he doesn't hit the moneymaker, we're going to be fine. Oh, you're picking those up. For the Sport Relief Tennis Challenge Trophy. The problem with me, the Aberhall, is I'm going to be out of my comfort zone. I think I'm going to feel a mixture of excitement and maybe the feeling that finally, I'm home. Now we know they've got a court here, let's do it every Friday. It's the Royal Albert Hall. Parking is the big worry. We're doing this for sport relief, of course. Uh, well, we did have fun, so it's not, like, it's not like swimming the channel, I'll give you that. <laughs> Let combat commence. Gregor. We met him two years ago. He's got a form of muscular dystrophy known as Duchenne's, a genetic condition that's only found in boys. It makes your muscles weaker and you can't do much, like scratch your head or stand or that, just can't do anything like that. Eventually your body just gives up. In 2006, we saw how your money gave the family a day off from coping. It paid for Gregor and his family and his best mate Jamie to have a day messing around in kayaks and canoes on the water. It was a day to remember. It was a very special day. Just, as I said, we'd never done anything like that as a family before. To see Gregor laughing and the girls. And every time I watch it, I, I, I do, I get a lump in my throat. Since we made that film, Gregor's health has deteriorated, and today he's in Rachel's house, Children's Hospice for Respite Care. Look at you, Gregor. <laughs> it's tough because this is where he saw his older brother, Gary, die of exactly the same disease. With Gregor having the health problems this year, he has asked, where am I going to die? Is it going to be soon? Well, none of us know, so I keep saying to him, well, nobody knows, we just, you know, when it happens, it'll happen. You'll know yourself when the time is right. 
And with a gritty determination to continue his life as normally as possible, Gregor took his school exams alongside his mates. And his dad is on the way to the hospice with his results. Postman. Gregor, oh Gregor. For Gregor and his family, they're proof of his spirit and determination. You know what to do that? Do you want to do it here or in your room? Oh, we've got biology. We've got a C for biology. Yeah, that's good. Well done. Yeah, well done, Gregor. Yeah. Oh, C for English. You got your English. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all in all, you've got one, two, three C's, an A, and two B's. So shy. <laughs> so tough. Yeah. Just shy. Oh, I'm so tough. So tough. <laughs> 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 oh, it's it's a fantastic day for the Andersons. Please, oh, that's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> And it's these special days, whether they're exam results or the fabulous days out that you have paid for, that bring a smile and lift the spirits of people who face huge challenges. Please help us make more memories and more smiles by giving as much as you can. 08457 910 910. Thank you. We'd like to say thank you so much for watching. Please keep donating. And you can turn over to BBC One now. Now, please. Bye from us.